Hi, this is Ron Perkins with the Perkins Experience, and welcome to YouTube channel. So, uh, if you're here, you're probably considering getting a solar system. Uh, this information I'm going to be breaking down, probably making four or five videos or whatever it takes, because it's a lot of information to take hold of. Uh, especially, usually I present this in just a 45-minute uh, conversation with the customer, letting them know everything there is to know about their solar system. Like I said, I'll probably be breaking this down into five videos so that you can, you know, re use each part as you need it. Um, we're going to talk specifically about microinverter system and time of use and net energy metering in this video. So, uh, well, let's get started. So the net energy metering. Uh, net energy metering is what you're going to be put on as soon as you pass uh, final inspection and your job cards get signed off, uh, you're going to be considered a generation station. So before you got solar or before you consider getting a house with solar, you're just a consumer. When you get approved to turn your system on, you're now considered a generation station. And that address, until somebody rips the system off, will always be considered a generation station. Because of that, you're going to be qualified and put on, without any choice, the net energy metering program. So the net energy metering program is simply a yearly billing program. There's two things on your electric bill. Fees and taxes and electricity used. The fees and taxes, those are still going to be due monthly. Sorry about that. The, the energy used is going to be due once a year. So, like I said, net energy metering program, really just a fancy word for saying the electricity you used is not due for 12 months. Uh, and you're kind of pre-programmed uh, to look at your bill, box on the front, that's what I owe. You don't want to do that anymore either. Once you get solar, you'll want to look at, like, if you're an Edison customer, it's page four. If you're any other customer of any utility, SDG&E, pg and &E, whoever else is out there, because all I deal with is California, um, you'll want to look at where it says energy charge total. Uh, you'll want to look there uh, because they're going to keep track of how much energy your house uses every month. But like I said, they're not going to bill it till the end of the year. Why? Because the utility knows there's longer daylight hours in the summertime versus the winter time. So instead of you paying them in the winter and them paying you in the summer, they just say, hold on, let's just go the whole year and see who owes what to who. That's all net energy metering is. All right, so now we're gonna go out and talk about time of use. Now, in San Diego, they call it DRSES, which is like domestic rate solar energy system. PG&E calls it something else, but they all have the same verbiage. They all work the same. It's time of use no matter what. Uh, I'm gonna tell you how to find out, you know, what their hours are. Uh, but before I get into that, I'm going to tell you where the program ever came from. Back in the 70s, we used to get brownouts. Brownouts were generally caused by manufacturers because they're the biggest users of electricity. So probably one smart manufacturer one day, probably in the summertime, called up the utility and said, Hey, we need more power. Utility said, What do you want us to do? Stop using so much. Smart guy said, Hey, you know what? I'll pay you double what those residents pay. You just turn down their grid, push that power over to our grid, we'll make twice the product, you'll make twice the money, and also I'll just get the afternoon off. All the utilities like that idea so much you actually see the evidence of that in their commercial, flex your power, give your appliances the afternoon off. So because of time and use, the time and use program came about. Now all the powers, uh, sorry, all the power companies are kind of crying about this time of use program because the solar customers who've gotten solar and use this program to their advantage, which I'll go into that, 
they're actually, the utility is actually losing a little bit of money. It's not like they're going to go out of business. We need them to stay in business. But they don't have to be bending us over the barrel like they have been as well. Uh, like I said, you'll always want to check and make sure that your system is qualified and, and um, signed up for this time of use program and you want to call your utility to find out exactly what the hours of time on peak and off peak hours are. Anyway, so with, with that being said, uh, I'm going to explain the Edison, I'm going to explain the Edison time of use program and it doesn't matter what utility serves your house uh, all you'll have to do is call them and ask them a couple questions the first question you want to ask and of course this is only if you have solar because uh, as you'll see if you don't have solar you don't want to sign up for this program but uh, like I said you'll want to go on the internet find out type in the utilities name google it whatever get their phone number and then talk to somebody about the time of use program see if they offer it see what their their most important question you want to know is what are their on peak and off peak hours I'll give you a minute to grab a piece of paper I know that's frustrating and I'll wait <laughs> 